Hello, my name is Rick Houston, and welcome to the Moneyline Scene Vault Podcast, your source for all things NASCAR history. Presented by Las Vegas Motor Speedway, America's racing showplace. Oh, I'll, next, next cup race. Yeah. I'll be there. I'll get, you know, me and him, you know, we'll get together. There wasn't no next week. There wasn't no next cup race. Said, you really need, y'all need to turn TV on now. I said, what's wrong? She said, you need to turn TV on now, on the news. Adam's been in a bad wreck. I was not only upset because I loved Adam, but I knew Kyle was hurt. Kyle was like a brother to me, a big brother. I knew Kyle's heart was broke, and it broke my heart. The day NASCAR and all of us associated in any way with NASCAR forget its past, that's the day we don't have any future. So Bobby Hamilton joined the team in 1995, and things really seemed to start turning around. Yeah. What was the difference? Bobby knew a lot about the race cars from, way he, from his past at the local short tracks. Robbie and Bobby, they, they got along really good to start with. Bobby was a good driver, really good driver. And Bobby knew a lot about the race cars. And it was quite a bit of difference. And with no disrespect to Rick Wilson or Wally Dollenbach or whoever, Bobby could tell Robbie what he wanted I want to round in, I want to round out, do this, do that, on the pit stop. Wonder, that was wonderful. We ain't never heard this. We haven't been hearing this from nobody. So I think the first year we finished ninth in the points, if I'm not mistaken. And Bobby was a fun guy. One, I mean, just liked to joke, liked to laugh, just a great guy. 1996 Rockingham. And I was there. I was in the pits with you guys. Bobby's in position to win the first race of his career, but gets moved a little bit or a whole lot by Dale Earnhardt late in the race. Mm -hmm. What was your reaction? We all kind of seen it coming. We <laughs> knew. You know, I love Dale. Dale was a great race car driver and a great person at the motorhome, too, to talk to. Wonderful person. But we knew if he got to that back bump, we knew what was going to happen. We just didn't think he was going to be that big. We was all excited because we was all ready to win. Everybody at Petty Enterprise on the crew was ready to win. You know, this it's coming. Well, when that happened, he hit us, spun, you know, and then knocked, knocked the car out of whack. We come in. We done something, and what happened was it, it must have knocked the camera out of the rear end. We went back out. Bobby spun the car, hit the wall. Just that was it. We were done. That was probably the maddest I've ever seen. Richard Petty. Richard didn't say a word. Went right back on the bus and just sat there and looked right out the window. Linda come out the bus. I said, "He's mad." I said, I know he's mad. He ain't saying nothing. <laughs> when Richard gets quiet like that, he is he's he was mad. So there's some other things I could tell you what Dale <laughs> Earnhardt come up to next week and come up to Dale Inman and said, Dale Holland ain't gonna be mad at me, but I'm not gonna tell you what Dale said. I can't. This is a family channel. So. <laughs> I'm not going to call you know Dale well, M and I well, paraphrase. <laughs> <laughs> well, I better not say it just to be respectful to everybody involved. But Dale, you know how Dale Emmons was. Yeah. And Dale was. Dale was 100% Richard Petty STP. You know Dale was a racer, didn't put up with nothing. And when that happened, boy, Dale was fierce. Dale did get loud. <laughs> Let's put it that way. <laughs> Well, it was worth a shot. Yeah. So you go from that point in February to Phoenix later that year, and Bobby wins. You're there. Tell me about that day. Well, we'll back up just a little bit. Everything was going good. The, the 25th anniversary of STP, we had different paint scheme, a lot of fun, having a great year. 
Indianapolis. I hurt my knee. Tore ACL. What happened was we come in, Bobby. Bobby said I got a flat tire. Unfortunately, we qualified bad, so we're on that in the pit road. When Bobby said he was coming in, he was already in. So we all, as soon as we jumped to the wall, as soon as we got to the wall, we had to go. There wasn't no waiting on Bobby. He was there. As soon as I planted that right front wheel, right front leg, Bobby was right there. So I had to jump and twist out of the way to keep him getting hit. When I did, I tore my knee up bad. Didn't know it. Thought I just jammed it. So we done right sides. Come to find out it was the left rear. Bobby says, wrong tire, I'm coming back in. And here I am with a busted knee, didn't know it. Thought I'd sprained my leg. So I had to jump back over the wall again with a torn ACL, finish it. And I said, so I, when I got done, I fell against the wall. I told Mickey, our pilot, he was doing the signboard. I said, Mickey, I'm done. I said, I can't do another pit stop. So everybody, <laughs> the guys gave me a goodie powder and said, walk around, you'll be okay. I went, I don't know, guys. So luckily that was the last pit stop. I don't know what we ended up, lap down or something. So I'm out for the rest of the season. And we had a the guy on the truck team, Richard's truck team, to jack the car on Sunday, Ned. So, of course, I, we was all excited to win Phoenix. There was no doubt. No doubt. Everybody was happy. It, it bothered me because I wasn't jacking the car. I wanted to be the jack man when we won yeah. our first race. But we was there. We all had a great time. We won the race. It was awesome. So for you, it was it was bittersweet. Bittersweet for sure, because I wasn't I wanted to be the Jack Man when we won that first race, and I was. When how long was your recuperation? Did you have to have surgery? Or? Oh yeah, yeah. I had to have a clean up surgery uh, to start with, and then after Dover that year, I went in for the repl not the replacement, but reconstruction. They had to make a new ligament, screw it in, you know, screw it in both places. Rehab until the time I left for Daytona. I, they let me start practicing in January with the brace. And then I continued to wear the brace all year. They said I didn't have to, but I did anyway. Because of, yeah. you don't know what's going to happen on pit road. Yeah. So. Bobby wound up leaving at the end of the 97 season. What happened? Like the old saying goes, the honeymoon was over. And we won Rockingham that that year, and and Bobby knew after we won Rockingham that he had made a mistake. He had already signed for on Morgan McClure to drive the four car, and you could see it in his face. And everybody knew Bobby was upset, and we won the race happy about that. But he knew that he was leaving somewhere where he knew he was really happy, and there was more potential there. So, I, th I think the honeymoon was over. It was just, I know everybody wasn't happy that, as far as the management was not happy with Bobby leaving to go to the four car. Then I think that it just, it just snowballed from there. You know what I mean? And we all still got along with Bobby. We all loved Bobby, no doubt. But it just, we had, we felt like we had, we was gaining momentum. And like, what in the world, yeah. you know? So. So John Andretti rejoined the team in 98. What was his personality like? A whole lot different than Bobby's. <laughs> John was a, a great guy, a great family man. Um, serious, very serious about racing. Um, of course, the Andretti family, there's no doubt about that, but he was... He was excited. He was very excited to come back to Petty Enterprises for 98. And we all had high hopes, too, you know. Um, he was, he was, uh, he wasn't as knowledgeable with the race car as Bobby was, of course, because of Bobby's background, but, but a very, a very good driver. Wasn't scared to go fast at all. 
You know, people look at me when I say that and like, trust me, there's a difference. You know, there's race car drivers that don't want to go fast. Then there's race car drivers that take the spoiler off, move the bleachers back, let's go. You know what I mean? <laughs> John was that guy. John, he didn't care how fast. He, he wanted to go fast. You know, he gave it 110% every week. Robbie Loomis left at the end of the 99 season. How big of a surprise was that? Very big. I mean, I was on, I'll tell you <clears throat> where I was when it, I got the word. I was in a log cabin up in the mountains of North Carolina on vacation. And I didn't hardly have any kind of TV service up there. I had a local TV or whatever. And that's when I found it out and I went, huh? They said Robbie Loomis left Petty Enterprise to go to crew chief for Jeff Gordon. So you found out on TV? Yeah. Really? I was on vacation. Wow. And I thought, I said, you hearing this? I said, this is unbelievable. Had no idea. You know, we just had one Martinsville with Andretti in the spring. And, and then, of course, it shocked John. It shocked everybody. They were like, Robbie's our crew chief. You know, Robbie's our guy. But, in the, we, but you can't blame Robbie. Robbie had bigger plans. You know, I think Robbie had the same plans I had when I left. So, and Robbie, you know, Robbie had a plan and it worked. So, this episode is sponsored by Moneyline the all-in-one personal finance app designed to help you take control of your money. Moneyline, an official partner of 2311 Racing, has been part of the racing community for years. And no matter if you're prepping for your next tailgate or just looking to upgrade some things around the house, with the Moneyline app, you're one step closer to getting your financial future on the right path. With Moneyline, you can borrow, save, invest, and earn money all in one place. At every turn, Moneyline is helping you set the foundation for a strong financial future. Make sure to follow Moneyline on social media and download the Moneyline app today. Visit moneyline.com slash hot pass for more information. All right. Um, I've been dreading asking this question. Um, the team seemed to be getting better and better um, on the racetrack. Petty Enterprises was on its way back. And then May 12th, the year 2000, uh, the sky fell down around everybody. Uh, how did you find out about Adam's accident? Again, I was at home. I was up in the mountains with Mother's Day weekend. And we had a friend of ours um, watching our dog and staying at our house, you know, no big deal. Next thing you know, she called Tina, my wife. She said, you really need, y'all need to turn TV on now. I said, what's wrong? She said, you need to turn TV on now, on the news. Adam's been in a bad wreck. And when I turned it on, it's still hard. Um, he had, you know, they had said Adam Petty was killed in a practice crash. And I said, no, ain't no way. No way. I just laid face down on the bed and didn't say a word until I could get myself pulled together. When I got myself pulled together, I told my wife, I said, we gotta get out of here. We gotta go home. I, I don't we don't I don't wanna be here. I wanna be. So we left and came straight home. We hadn't even been there a night yet. We just had got there and checked in the hotel. I ain't going home. I'm going straight to Kyle's. And we went straight to Kyle's. And the highway patrol friend we knew was watching the gate, kind of, you know, because of what just happened. Everybody, I knew everybody was going to pile in. So he let me in. He knew who I was. Went down there, Kyle, Richard, Linda. I don't know, take it back. My not Linda wasn't there. It was Kyle, Richard, and Don Tilly sitting on the front porch. Kyle's sisters were there. Sharon, Lisa, and Rebecca. A 
Patty was in the house, very distraught, obviously. Um, somebody was, I can't remember who was with Patty in there at the time. But it's saying Kyle. He wasn't visibly upset, but I was. I was not only upset because I loved Adam, but I knew Kyle was hurt. Kyle was like a brother to me, a big brother. I knew Kyle's heart was broke, and it broke my heart. So that was bad. That was that's probably as bad as it was going to get right there for everybody. Everybody was like, but what do we do now? I mean, big plan. We had big plans. Everybody had big plans. Richard just expanded the shop, getting ready for Adam. Everybody was getting ready for Adam. And then this happened. <clears throat> what do you remember about the next few days? <sighs> Probably not, not much of nothing. I just... Everybody, I was none. You, I'm, I'm guilty of believing, pretending things didn't happen. Then it hits me like a ton of rocks. Yeah. I'm, you know how we are in racing. There's always next week. Yeah. Okay. We'll back up a week before Adam's accident. Adam's building a new house. I'm at the shop. He was almost done with that new house. Matter of fact, when he got back to New Hampshire, I think he was going to start moving in. He come driving into Petty Enterprise with his Corvette. Drove down his window and said, hey, Arch. So what's happening? He said, hey, I want you to come see my new house. So I said, when you get back to New Hampshire, I'll come over. All right. He went on, with, you know, went on down to the office. There, there was no the next week. And that, you know, we always say, there's always next week. I oh, don't worry about it. You know, we'll get to it next week. Another regret I have is when he ran his cup race at Texas. Of course, you know, I'm jacking the 43 car. That was April of 2000. And with the past that me and Adam had with the go-karts, we were, we were tight. Okay, you know, we were teammates pictures or whatever you know we was there together biggest one of the biggest regrets i have is i didn't walk down into that race car of his before the race and me and him got our picture made together with that race car his first what we've been working on all these years since he was eight years old for him to get in a cup car that was his dream that's where we all knew he was headed I did, I did not walk down there because I thought they'll be next week. Oh, I'll, next, next cup race, yeah. I'll be there. I'll get, I, you know, me and him, you know, we'll get together. There wasn't no next week. There wasn't no next cup race. I'll always have to live with that. I'm bad about that. I'm bad about putting things off, and I know I shouldn't have. So, and I did. Kyle has talked a lot about the new normal following Adam's accident. For you personally, what was the new normal there at Petty Enterprises? It was it was work as usual. We we had to pick up the pieces. Everybody had commitments, whether it was sponsor commitments, employee commitments. We all had a job to do. And Adam would want us to do our job. He'd want everybody to get back in the racing and go, go, go. Just like he was wanting to do. It was very quiet, very somber around Petty Enterprises and for Adam's team. I couldn't imagine I couldn't imagine with my relationship with Adam being at New Hampshire when that happened. I, I felt bad for those guys. It was just, for a long time, there was no chatter, no laughter. We always had laughs, camaraderie at the shop. There was nothing. Put the cars together, load them on a truck, let's go. 
I got in the bus, went to the race. Didn't ask. We didn't ask no questions. We didn't. Nobody said anything. No comments. We just did our deal quietly. And then we just had to slowly get back in the groove and move forward. I was at New Hampshire, and I know how it impacted my career. It impacted my career in a big way. So I can only imagine what it was like for you guys. I mean, I, I, I knew Adam. I knew enough to joke with him, but it, it was, you know, certainly not a close personal relationship. The Lord had the plan for everything, and he knew who not to have there at that track and who to have at that track when that accident happened. Kyle was over with Montgomery Lee at a horse show in, I think, England, I think somewhere like that. And I was, of course, at, on vacation at home taking a weekend trip. And like I said, I don't know if I would have been standing there on top of that truck with those guys and seen him hit that wall knowing at, and after that what happened, I, I don't know. I just, I don't know if I could have handled it. I don't know if I, I don't know. I don't know what could have happened. But one of the things that always gets me and I'll respect and look up to Kyle for, I don't know if a lot of people know this, but Mike Helton had to call Kyle Petty. They're in another country. Mike Helton said that was the hardest phone call he'd ever have to make. Yeah. How Kyle kept it together till he, till he got back to the States with Montgomery Lee, I don't know. That man, the, the willpower and the strength that man had to keep it. Montgomery Lee wasn't, what, 12, 10 or 11 or 12 at the time. Loved her brother to death. For him to keep it together to get back to the United States, Patty and Mickey, the pilots, flew up to New York to meet Kyle and Montgomery Lay on Richard's plane. And Kyle, they didn't tell Montgomery Lay until they got on the plane to come home. The, Mickey, the pilot, said he just shut the door. He didn't go on the plane. He just shut the door. He said, let me know when y'all are ready. And that was, Mickey said, he could hear Montgomery Lee screaming on, you know, on the plane. That was, I, I just, I look up to Kyle for that, and I, res, I have a lot of respect for Kyle and the strength he had. I couldn't imagine somebody calling me and telling me my child had just been in an accident and didn't make it. And here I am in another country. Yeah. How, how do you handle that? And you're standing right next to your daughter. You know you don't want to. You want to get home before you let her know. It's unbelievable.